Hello and welcome to the Tudor Dixon podcast. I'm Tudor Dixon and I'm excited to have you join me today. Today I get to have somebody actually here with me. My guest has been breaking a lot of news in Michigan and he's currently following the Senate campaign of Alyssa Slotkin, which is why I want to have him here today because I have a lot to say about this. I'm sort of fired up. Anyway, Kyle Olson, the founder of The Midwesterner, right here with me. Thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So the reason I'm fired up about this is because we've gone through two school shootings now just in the past few weeks. We've had the one in Nashville, the one at Michigan State. Alyssa Slotkin is using this as her campaign mechanism now. She's running on Really, she's running on the deaths of our children, and I think it's disgusting. I think that this is not a political issue. I think nothing is done about it because there are two different political sides to this issue when there's really an answer down the middle that we're not even looking at because politicians get in the way, quite frankly, and not in a good way. So tell us what Alyssa's doing now. Yeah, it's really interesting to see how Alyssa Slotkin has really sort of been pushed to the front. I noticed this when, when I have been working on the site and posting stories, I noticed this first when, remember when the balloon was shot down over Michigan? Well, she, she's a military expert. I don't know if you know that. Yes. And so she is all of a sudden was in front of the cameras talking about her CIA experience and, and all of that. And I thought, well, that's, that's kind of a strange thing. Cause it's not her district. She's not, it, it just didn't make any sense. So then when the MSU shooting happened, she immediately, again, was right out front. And what was interesting to me was, again, as I was posting these stories, there was a story last week about how she basically is trying to make gun control a centerpiece of her campaign. And she's campaigning on this whole idea of creating more gun laws. And so there was a Detroit News story uh, from March 20, March 21st. And it started like this, Alyssa, uh, uh, U.S. Representative Alyssa Slotkin was leaving an event in Oakland County last month when the Lansing Democrat got word of an active shooter on the campus of Michigan State University. She put her foot on the gas and drove 90 miles an hour on Interstate 69 to East Lansing, set up, setting up a mobile office of sorts in the basement of the uh, police department where the mayor was also stationed. A mobile campaign office. I mean, let's uh, be honest about well, this. This is what she did. She drove there and she says, I'm going to I'm going to fight this. But the bizarre thing about this is that one of these bills that she's she's going to be introducing is exactly what's on the books here in Michigan. Had it been followed in Michigan, this likely would not have happened at MSU. So it's all just baloney. They can say your thoughts and prayers mean nothing. Your fake bills mean nothing. Alyssa so so that's interesting because there was just uh, just last week on Wednesday, she did a press conference, of course, because that's what politicians love to do, where she introduced um, a couple different bills where she claims this is going to you know help solve the problem. And so what she is basically proposing a couple things she's proposing the no crime left behind act uh, which would prohibit transfer of a gun for three years to someone after they were convicted of a misdemeanor during which they carried or possessed a gun so you think about that and what i mean what as you have looked at these other stories what difference do you think that is going to make but the, only it only makes a difference, first of all, if it is actually enforced. That was the law here. So this guy that goes on MSU's campus, he was convicted of a crime with a gun. It was he got to plead down to a misdemeanor. So if they had actually prosecuted this crime, he would not have been able to buy a gun, which he did buy a gun. And then he went on the MSU campus. So they come out with these baloney laws that they say are going to do something when laws like this are already on the books. But the funny thing about Democrats is then they don't want to enforce those laws because that would be what, I don't know, bias in some way if you enforce these laws. Well, th well, that's a whole nother subject where they are trying to, you know, fiddle with statistics and the way to do that, to show that, to make the argument that there is not bias in policing, well, they just arrest fewer, you know, certain types of people to fiddle with the numbers. But then another one that she's introducing is the Pause for Safety Act, which would require a one week waiting period before a buyer can receive a gun. So you talk about the Nashville situation. It seems to me like that person had very clear intent. They wrote the manifesto. She targeted, it appears that she targeted certain people. 
Um, is is a one week waiting period going to stop someone like that? That's what I think is it's this is the disingenuous part about these laws. It's just to put it out there. It's a campaign. It's just a campaign slogan. I'm going to be tough on guns when this wouldn't have done anything to stop what happened in Nashville. This wouldn't have done anything to stop what happened at MSU. Maybe there are crimes of passion that this would slow down. But we're, she's coming out here and she is campaigning on the fact that she's going to keep kids safe. That has been her thing over and over again. I'm going to keep kids safe. But we look at Nashville and I'm mad about this because these this is just too close to home for every parent in the country. You see the story of the nine-year-old who went to pull the fire alarm because she's so desperate to save her classmates and she gets shot. It's enough enough with the baloney gun violence is a problem. We've got a violence problem in this country. This is a violence problem that has been egged on by politicians like Alyssa Slotkin, who have said, you know, be be weak on crime. Come on, keep this soft on crime politicians out there and these prosecutors and let's continue to to you know fall at the feet of the soft on crime prosecutors. Meanwhile, our kids are in these schools with zero protection whatsoever. And nobody wants to talk about protecting the kids in the school because we'd rather say, well, we can put money into theories. We can make sure that we have more laws on the books. We can attack our political enemy, which is guns and Republicans. But at the end of the day, this is not doing anything when you've had all these companies come forward and say, we've got the technology to make sure we have the doors lock to make sure that we stop the the bullets from flying and i hate to say that but we have got to get serious about making sure that once somebody is in that school they are secluded from those kids and the kids are protected and we never talk about that and it makes me sick well and maybe the most ridiculous aspect of what she is coming up with is she wants to give 250 million dollars to the CDC to um, to research gun ending gun violence. So think about this. Instead of saying maybe we should harden our schools, maybe we should make sure kids are actually safe because we know maybe we don't know what the mental problems are, what drives someone to um, shoot nine year olds. Maybe we don't understand that, but we know what they're doing and we know simple steps to um, stop that from happening and that is to protect the school. So instead of spending money that way, she wants to spend, she wants to give $250 million to the CDC. And when I read this sort of thing, I think, you know, this is a perfect um, way to explain that they are, all they wanna do is just perpetuate the administrative state, state. And so they're not interested in actually fixing the problem. She wants to introduce bills like this. She wants to go out and have a press conference get a news story like this, and nothing changes. Hire a bunch of people to to research something that we've been dealing with for years. I remember, so I was in college when Columbine happened. It was a shock. It seemed like that was a one-time thing. Like, how could this ever happen? How could kids ever decide to go up and shoot, it, shoot up their school? And honestly, I was talking to one of my family members last night, and I said, it's so shocking to me because it's something we never had to think about as kids. And this week has been interesting with my girls because I had one of my girls, she's 11, and I was putting her to bed the other night and she went through this. I've never seen my kids go through this before, but she went through this like crying fit. And she was like, I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. And I kept saying, well, you're not going to lose me. And she said, but I don't want to die. And I think just what these kids have to go through wondering if somebody is going to come in their classroom and shoot them it makes me sick because we did we talk about the mental health issues but this is something we truly as kids never even thought about and then you think about it i mean i'm 45 probably shouldn't say that because the, now i mean now you know um but i'm 45 this happened when i was in college so you think about the number of years that this has gone by with columbine say even if columbine okay if we thought that was going to be a one-off sandy hook how long ago was that 12 years ago that sandy hook happened and We've seen this time and time again, and you have the Democrats saying this is uniquely American and you have the Republicans out there saying, well, we've got to protect the Second Amendment rights. Forget about how what is used 
you can't you can't figure out who's going to do this. I mean, there are times when we we say, "Gosh, it was so obvious," but hindsight is twenty twenty. I mean, even this one, there was even the Nashville shooter sent a message to someone on Instagram. She sent she followed them, went to the the police station, called it an emergency hotline, said, "I got this DM that I think is pretty suspicious," and they still couldn't get there in time to stop this person from doing this. So mental health is a real issue. Are we going to be able to stop everyone? No, there's going to be people that are going to do bad things and try to get into a school where they know there's nothing that will be used against them. There's no weapon. There was a story that I heard a couple days ago where they're saying now that they think the reason she chose the Christian school may have been because there was no security. I mean, and maybe that's a way of making, oh, it wasn't anti-Christian, but it was no security. But regardless, if you know that there is nothing to protect the children there, that's going to be a target. You are a soft target. And I am sick and tired of my kids going into school every day and me worrying about what's going to happen when I know that the point of me saying this happened so many years ago is that I know tech companies have been working on this. I know dads like Andrew Pollock have been working on this and they've come up with all of these technologies that can be used to identify a gunshot, to uh, sound an alarm, to lock the doors, to make sure our schools are safe. And we're talking about putting $250 million into more research, just more eggheads to sit around and talk about gun violence. Meh. What we need is people to actually go there and do something about these schools. Well, and at what point are school leaders, especially private schools, where they have more decision making power um, as opposed to a school board? But at what point is our our private schools going to say this? We're going to use this as a selling point where we believe in yeah. school safety, and this is what we're doing to secure our school. We're locking the doors. We're you know we have armed personnel, all of these sorts of things, and use that as an asset because. There are so many school districts that absolutely refuse to do this. And I think they what they're really doing is caving to the teachers union because they are anti-gun um, 100 percent. And at, at what point are schools finally going to say, here's what we're doing. Come to our school because we are going to keep your kids safe. Now, I think that that is a terrible indictment of society and where we are today. But at what point are they going to do that? And I think that's the the problem. When you're in the political world, you have to be on one side or the other, and you can't really have the the human discussion of this sucks. I mean, it sucks. I hate it. I hate the fact that there are people that go into our schools. I don't know what kind of a psycho, disgusting human being decides to go and shoot children. To kill anyone, but to kill children is the most vile thing I can imagine. And I, I think it's just devastating for you devastate so many lives it then you have this community of people that are against the anybody that was related to the person who went in and did it i mean the whole thing is just a breakdown and yeah where we are where are we in society that this is happening and honestly i think all of us are asking right now where are we in society that we have accepted violence to the level that we have and so when i hear politicians who come out like Alyssa slotkin who is clearly just focused on her senate campaign and wanting to win that Senate campaign and using the blood of our children to get there, which I think is disgusting. But also, I mean, look at Kamala Harris going out there and saying, keep fighting, keep going out on the streets, keep keep raging against the machine. You know, the, they have called on it for violence multiple times. And then they go, why is there violence? But see, they separate it from violence and gun violence. Because if you're a Democrat and you can say gun violence is the problem, then you can take the human element out of it and you can continue to keep people in a situation where they're anxious, where they have mental issues, where they have financial issues. And all of those things lead to a violent society. And then you tell them rage against all of these things that are wrong with you. And what a shock guns are used. Well, and let's talk about how politicians weaponize these sorts of attacks. Um, one of the things that I've been doing on the website is I, I like to highlight, I highlight politics, obviously, things going on in culture, things going on in schools, and crime. Because some crimes that, you know, you read about are just so bizarre. I mean, there was one, I, I linked to one uh, last week about how these two bank robbers wrote their note on the back of a pay stub with all of their information on it. I mean, that's, that's a 
interesting individual that doesn't realize that. It's a um, Darwin Award. But, but one of the things that I just find so bizarre is there are terrible crimes that occur basically every single day in the city of Detroit. Um, kids being killed, multiple people being killed at the same time, you know, drive-bys, whatever it is. And Alyssa Slotkin says nothing. If you're wondering whether Alyssa Slotkin cares about kids and cares about guns and cares about violence, and if this is really at her core a problem for her, then you would see her come out and talk about this. When you, for folks outside of Michigan, you all obviously saw the Michigan State University school shooting where the guy came on campus and shot people. And this is just so you're aware, this is in the 17th most violent city in the country. So a lot of people don't understand Michigan has become much more progressive. We have a lot of Soros funded prosecutors. These folks are letting people off. We have four of the 20 most dangerous or most violent cities in the country. So why, where is Alyssa Slotkin when these shootings happen two blocks over from Michigan State? And why the outrage and shock when you know that you have allowed this city to become the 17th most violent city in the country? And you've allowed these prosecutors to say, we're not actually going to prosecute crimes. We're just going to keep letting people out. I just heard a story a couple of days ago about the U.S. attorney in D.C. just not even prosecuting murders anymore. Not even prosecuting murders anymore. What? And then they go, Vote for me because I'm going to protect you from violence, the violence that I'm actually promoting by not prosecuting the people that are committing violence. I mean, at, at what point will Americans rise up and say, we're done with this? We want safety. Right. Well, I will say she is rolling up her sleeves to take care of this. That's a, you know, that's a reference to her campaign launch video. She was at a restaurant and she got a sandwich and she said she had to roll up her sleeves to eat the sandwich. It was... It was sort of strange. I gotta like roll up my sleeves. <laughs> Where do you think these politicians are coming from? And why do you think, because during the campaign, you had, I thought they were sensible ideas about, you know, uh, trying to end this, protecting schools, protecting students. But it doesn't seem like the people in office want to actually do anything about that. So do you think this may be a very cynical sort of take on it. But do you think that they just simply, they don't want to fix the problem because it can just be something that they continue to campaign on? Of course, because they can shame the other side. They have effectively shamed the other side and it becomes a great campaign issue. Look, when DeMar Hamlin had the problem on the basketball court, everybody tweeted out, I'm praying for him. Football field. A uh, football field, sorry. When DeMar Han... Han Let's do that over and we'll cut that out. <laughs> Look, when DeMar Hamlin had the problem on the football field and he went into cardiac arrest, you saw endless clubs come out there and say, we're praying for him. We saw celebrities come out and say, we're praying for him. This was totally acceptable to say we're praying. I ha we had a legislator in Michigan after the shooting that said F your thoughts and prayers mm -hmm. posted that came out. If you say thoughts and prayers, screw you, you're, you're the problem. So your faith is meaningless to us. You're actually the problem because you're saying this, you know what? F your fake bills. I mean, give me a break. The fact that you think that you can go out and just campaign on all of this that you have perpetuated. And, and look, like I said, both of us said we don't like the way society has gone and where society is right now. This is obviously a problem. But at the end of the day, somehow we don't have our banks robbed of all the money. Somehow the jewelry stores don't end up completely empty. I mean, I, I guess unless you're in San Francisco or someplace where they've allowed this, but they've started to allow people to run into our stores and people are now outraged, right? So now you see people saying, we're leaving Portland, we're leaving San Francisco, we're not going to keep our headquarters in Seattle anymore because they've started to let people charge in and rip you off. But for years, for over 20 years now, we've sat by where people charge into our schools and we haven't said, where are the prosecutors that are stopping this from happening? Where is the protection? Where are the doors that lock? Where are the, the, the single issues where we can say, okay, we can pinpoint what keeps kids safe, 
But no, we're going to research it for five years. I mean, how sick is this? Alyssa Slotkin, you don't have kids, so maybe you don't get it. But in five years, some of my kids aren't in school anymore. So you're not really doing me any favors with your BS five-year study of gun violence. When we've had this violence problem for years and years that is perpetuated by your side, and then you tell us to shut up. Don't you dare talk about your faith when something happens like this. Don't you dare try to make these families feel better about the fact that our stupid policies allowed their kids to die. So during the campaign, this was, this was uh, especially after Oxford, this was an issue that you were really focusing on. And I don't know, you were talking about it, but you, I know you were talking more behind the scenes about it. So talk a little bit about some of the solutions that you found that you thought you thought would be interesting to try and implement well i think now kyle's interviewing me yeah. <laughs> switching <laughs> um i think what people don't understand is that when this happened at parkland the entire state of florida gathered around and said what can we do and they have implemented a lot at parkland in, uh, in florida at, at the schools in florida they have a safe schools director they've really focused on this in the state so then this happens in oxford this happened in oxford in michigan and this was two years after the state police came out with a safe schools plan to me, this is significant because the state police put together a very, a very long and lengthy comprehensive plan to keep our schools safe before Oxford, but as a reaction to Parkland. Then Oxford happens and nobody says because, you know, the media is in the bag for Gretchen Whitmer. And that's just the truth. This is why really you've created the Midwesterner to try to show what's truly happening in the state of Michigan. Uh, so the the news doesn't say, you know, man, if Gretchen Whitmer had taken Oxford seriously that or taken Parkland seriously, then Oxford may not have happened because she had the tools. And so we campaigned on the fact that we were going to go through the safe schools plan, make sure we implement the hardening of schools, make sure we have protection on campus. Forget about this idea that we're going to have our kids in a gun free zone, a sitting duck zone, as I call it, because we can have protection on our school campuses like most campuses do in Florida now, but not in Michigan. And so when I hear folks like Alyssa Slotkin and Gretchen Whitmer get up and, oh, you know, I'm so heartbroken over this, you're part of the problem. You knew this was happening. They didn't do anything. She didn't do anything after Oxford. She didn't do anything after our campaign when I called her out for not doing anything after Oxford. And then she comes out and blames Republicans for Michigan State. I mean, give me a break. On top of that, not only are we in a situation where they're not doing anything, they're using this to their advantage to continue to hold on to power. And notice that they actually know it doesn't matter if you talk about shootings in Detroit. It doesn't matter if you talk about shootings in Flint. It doesn't matter if you talk about shootings in Lansing unless they can identify with the people who died, which is pretty twisted because that should tell you everything you need to know about these Democrat politicians who, when the crisis is something that identi the majority of the country can identify with, they care. That's when they care. It's sick. And it, again, I go back to, it seems to me, I, I you know, come out of the school choice movement and all, you know, so I, I have experience with all kinds of different school choice options, but it seems to me like there's a major um, selling point that private schools can create by saying, give us your child and we will keep them safe because these are the things that we're going to do. The government school is not gonna do that. Um, the teachers union runs the show and they hate guns and they would prefer to ki have kids sitting in sitting duck zones than actually keeping them safe. And so it seems to me like schools, this should be the direction that schools are, should be going. And again, I, it's an indictment on society, but it's a reality but that what, sick people what, what are targeting schools. What does that mean schools. in a blue state? What does that mean in a state like ours? Because there's no school choice. They've made it clear there's never going to be school choice as long as they have power. So you're going to end up with families that can't afford private school. 
in these sitting duck zones. And we know that we've heard that the, these are researched. You know, the, the waiting period is BS because this is researched. She had maps. She had a manifesto. This person knew what she was doing. She had a plan. The waiting period didn't matter. The researching this I mean, we're going to wait another five years to research this. How many more kids have to die for Alyssa Slotkin to put money into protecting kids, actually, instead of put money into the bureaucracy and the legislative state and creating more committees? I mean, give me a break. Again, when a parent goes up and talks about this, maybe they'll understand. But Alyssa Slotkin is simply trying to get your vote. So don't be deceived by the BS, we're gonna take five years and suddenly put $50 million into people's lives. It's, it just makes me crazy because I cannot stand the thought of my kids growing up in a world where we're so busy fighting over who's gonna get elected that we continue to let this slaughter happen. And that school safety, keeping kids safe has turned into such a political issue. And right. I get it's a government school. So you've got a school board, which is elected and, you know, those are politicians and you've got the state involved and the feds involved. And I think a lot of times people don't fully appreciate the fact that that is a government entity. It's a political body, but this has really turned into a political issue. And as you said earlier, we keep banks safe. We keep other institutions safe. But yet we refuse, we refuse to make schools safe and we refuse to um, not have them be gun-free zones. And, and to be fair, I'm mad about this with Alyssa Slotkin because I think that this is a campaign issue. But on the flip side, Republicans aren't coming up and saying, you know what, let's put the money into keeping schools safe. They're just not doing this. This is total baloney because on both sides, you've got... Democrats using this to get elected. You've got Republicans saying, oh, we, we've got to defend guns. And so we're not going to talk about protecting kids. Take guns out of this equation and figure out how to protect kids. We've got to stop looking at this as there's only one answer here. It's got to be surrounding the weapon. There's children. Protect the children. Think of that issue. Let's start looking at it that way. That's my thoughts on this. Thank you so much for coming on and letting me complain about this. And thank you all for listening because I know I'm very passionate about this. I've got two nine-year-olds at home. This past shooting in Nashville is devastating to me. And I am at the point now where I'm just saying, I'm just going to keep saying it. When are you going to protect our kids? So thank you for listening to me rant about this issue today. Thank you for joining us on the Tudor Dixon podcast for this episode and others. Go to TudorDixonPodcast.com and you can subscribe right there. Make sure you join us next time on the Tudor Dixon podcast. We'll probably have you back because you're pretty close by. So thanks for joining us. Thank you. Everyone have a great day.